So you're sick and tired of how insanely boring D&D and Pathfinder's combat is, and while you like everything that you're hearing about Dungeon World, you just wish there were a little bit more from the character options provided, there's gotta be at least one person that perfectly describes. Because while I think Dungeon World's playbooks do a great job emulating those core like seven fantasy archetypes, I think the modern RPG gamer is a little bit spoiled when it comes to character options. And I don't mean that in like a grouchy boomer kind of way. These damn kids these days with all their and subclasses back in my day, we were lucky enough to be able to play a very human fighter. I really like character options. It's just that compared to 10 years of Wizards of the Coast dumping subclasses onto us and Pathfinder 2nd Edition having like actual meaningful character choices, Dungeon World's character options can fall a little short. The good news is a game designer by the name of John Stone Metzger thought the same thing 10 years ago, back when 5e was called D&D Next and Pathfinder was just 3.6. And he wrote a supplement to fix it. Enter Class Warfare. In case your first reaction wasn't, ah, Class Warfare. What a classic. Or, Class Warfare is bullshit and the antithesis of everything Dungeon World was built on. Class Warfare is a Dungeon World supplement that gives you a ton more character options. It was originally made so that you could create your own classes, or playbooks if you're super PBTA pilled. I don't know man, I'm not Matt Mercer. Making your own class sounds kinda hard. I promise, even though this book offers over 3,849 character combinations, creating your own custom class or whatever you want to call it is actually super simple. First, you're going to pick one of five archetypes. Disciples reflect clerics, priests, paladins. You get the idea. Magicians are magicians. They're magic users, wizards, sorcerers, warlocks. Do you really need any further explanation? Rogues are somewhat self-explanatory and warriors are also very self-explanatory. And finally, there are adventurers who have all sorts of miscellaneous specialties. Whoa, 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 whoa slow down. What's all this about specializations? Just give me a second, I am getting there. Your base archetype determines your damage die, how much you can carry, your max hit points, as well as your starting gear. It also gives you several alignment options as well as several bond options. And if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I talk about it a little bit in this video. Once you pick your archetype, you get to pick two or three specialties within that archetype. Specialties are really the meat and potatoes of where your character is gonna come from and they give you a ton of options. Let me make up an example to better explain this. Hello, example Austin here. As we all know, I'm a huge huge cringy edgelord. So our archetype is obviously going to be the rogue. That means that our base damage is a D8. So when we roll damage, we roll a D8. It also means that our maximum carry load is going to be our strength plus eight. And finally, it means that our maximum HP is gonna be six plus our constitution score. Next, we need to pick either two or three specialties. If we pick two specialties, then we get all the starting moves from both specialties, as well as an advanced move from one of them. But if we pick three, then we don't get any advanced moves. We only get the starting moves of the three specialties that we chose, but it also gives us a lot more options down the line. I think that choosing three is definitely the way to go. I don't know why you would ever choose two but that's up to you. Additionally, because we chose Rogue, it means that we get to start with the Flexible Morals starting move. That's tied to the Rogue archetype. Basically, that means we get to disguise our alignment whenever we may need to. And we also get a couple of racial move suggestions for the four core races in Dungeon World, but we'll talk about that more later. So now that we've chosen Rogue as our archetype, we need to choose between the 16 specialties that fall under the that umbrella, and I'm not gonna read them all. I like the idea of being super sneaky, dare I say, undetectable. So I'm thinking of choosing the shadow as our first specialty. Now the shadow gives us access to the starting move, Stay Out of the Light. Stay Out of the Light says that when you hide in shadows or darkness, you can't be detected by any normal means unless you reveal yourself. Which seems like a great starting move for a sneaky, sneaky, thiefy, roguey boy. Shadow gives us access to three advanced moves whenever we level up between levels two and five. And it gives us four super advanced moves to choose from when we level up between levels six and 10. Now I know that doesn't seem like a lot of moves 
to choose from so far, especially compared to the base classes. But remember, we've only picked one specialty so far. We still have two more to go. The shadow gives me access to one alignment and one alignment move. And that alignment is neutral. And the move is learn a secret about someone important. So I get XP anytime I learn a secret about someone important. It gives me a couple options for gear that I'm not gonna read off. And it gives me two races that I can play as and corresponding racial moves. But I'm not gonna select one yet because I wanna go through all the specialties before I choose which racial move I want. Now speaking of other specialties, I think it's time we pick our next specialty. And do you know what goes really well with being able to sneak around undetected? Killing people. In game. Mr. Mrs. NSA agent. Now of all these, what I think would work really well is the assassin specialty. Assassin gives me access to the backstab starting move, which says when you attack a surprised or defenseless enemy with a melee weapon, you can choose to deal your damage or roll plus dex. On a 10 plus, choose two. On a seven through nine, choose one. The assassin specialty also gives us access to four advanced moves that we can choose between levels two and five. It also gives us access to four super duper advanced moves that we can only choose between levels six and 10. This specialty also gives us access to two alignments and alignment quests, if you will. We get a couple bond options so that we can relate to our fellow party members, as well as several gear options. Just like the shadow though, I'm not gonna pick any of these until we actually pick our last specialty and then we can kind of figure out the entire picture of what we want. Now you might've noticed that I didn't say the assassin gives us any sort of racial options, and that's because not every single option gives you more racial options we would have to choose from any of the options given to us by either the shadow or the rogue archetype. Now, I feel like being super sneaky and an assassin is fairly vanilla, but there's some really wild shit in this book. So I wanna show off one of those crazy specialties. We're gonna turn the page from assassin and take a look at body thief. That's right, I said body thief. As in you steal people's bodies. As in you possess people's bodies. What could be better than sneaking into a dungeon or a castle or whatever, completely unseen, stealing someone's body by possessing them, killing your target, and everyone thinks it's the person who you possess that did it, and then you slip out unnoticed. Body Thief gives us access to the possession starting move, which does exactly what it says on the tin. And just like Shadow and Assassin, we're going to get a number of advanced moves that we can choose from, from levels two to five, in this case three. And we're going to get a couple of super advanced moves that we get to choose when we level from six to ten, in this case three. We're also going to get a bunch of alignments, chaotic, evil, and neutral. Not surprised good isn't on there at all. And it gives us two racial options and racial move options, which I'll go into that a little bit more in a sec. And of course we get more bonds for our party members and we get some gear options. So now that we've chosen our three specialties, it's time to choose our race. As I mentioned before, the rogue archetype gives us options for the four base dungeon world races. The shadow and the body thief also gives us options for the four base Dungeon World races. I know that sounds kind of confusing, but the way that Dungeon World works is that you get racial moves depending on your class race combo. In base D-dubs, an elven fighter can make any weapon use dex rather than strength. A human fighter can reroll a damage roll, whereas a human cleric gets one wizard spell. But class warfare gives us options even within the same race. So as an example for this example, we get to choose from two different halfling racial moves. We can either choose the halfling racial move from the rogue archetype, which gives us plus two damage on ranged attacks, or we can choose the halfling option from the body thief, which says when you possess someone of a different race, you gain a move that corresponds to their race for as long as you possess their body. For the purposes of this example, I think we're gonna go with halfling from the body thief, solely so that we get access to that really cool move that says when you possess someone of a different race, you get an extra move, blah, 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 blah. Hello, Editor Austin here. Basically, the same exact principle applies for alignments. In this case, due to our archetype and all of our specializations, we had 10 alignment options. We ended up going with the neutral option from the shadow, which means that we get experience anytime we learn something about someone important. We're almost to the finish line, folks. We just need to choose our gear. And the way that gear works in class warfare is that we get all of the gear from our archetype, and then we get to choose a piece of gear from each one of our specialties. So as a rogue, we get access to our own clothes, 
or someone else's, some dungeon rations, and we get to choose one piece of roguish gear. So either a backpack and adventuring gear, a dagger, a healing potion, a lantern and oil, or a ragged bow and a bundle of arrows. For this example though, we're gonna go with a dagger just because we get all of the other stuff from different specialties. The assassin specialty gives us access to backpack and adventuring gear, leather armor, rapier, a short sword, or three throne daggers. And I think we'll go with leather armor just so we have some defense. Body thief gives us access to adventuring gear, a book of sorcery, a change of clothes that we stole, dungeon rations, incriminating letters, manacles, and someone else's purse unopened. I think I'm gonna go with manacles here just because, I mean, we gotta tie up the people that were, you know, possessing and all that good stuff. It just seems appropriate. And then finally, the shadow specialty gives us access to adventuring gear, a backpack, and a key, although you don't know what it opens. But now that we've chosen our gear, we just need to assign stats, which is done the exact same way as vanilla D-dubs. It's like a point array, you assign it to each stat, whatever, I'm not gonna go into that. And then of course we have our bonds that we make with our party members, but this is a fake character for a video as an example, so we're not gonna go into that. That wasn't too complicated, right? Just choose an archetype and two or three specialties, and then you basically get your pick of the litter based on the various options that those specialties and archetypes give you. It's really just more options to build your character how you want it. But what if you're happy with the seven core classes, but you wanna know which ones are the best? Well, the good news is I talk about it in this video right here. So you should go check that out. And thank you so much for watching. Bam.